What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some battles in the open greatly featuring three newly buffed Pokemon in Gudra, Shadow Empoleon and Shadow Alolan Dug Trio. Now for those of you that don't know, Shadow Alolan Dug Trio is one of the most attack weighted Pokemon in the entire Great League and with Sand Attack for the fast move, it gets to those mod bombs insanely fast. I will say overall the team didn't work out amazingly, I think a lot of people have compared Gudra to Shadow Dragonair after it gained access to Aqua Tail, but I don't think they quite function in the same way. Gudra isn't near nearly as oppressive with the Dragon Breath damage, which is half the reason Shadow Dragonair is just so strong. Also I think Shadow Empoleon is pretty good, but I often used it to catch charge moves or as a say swap in this team, and it's very easily punished since now Steel Wing is resisted by water types, and water is absolutely everywhere in the meta. I did still have a ton of fun though, and Doug Trio pulled off some crazy sweeps, so with that being said, let's just get into the question of the day. What has been your favourite Pokemon to run this season that received a move update? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said let's get into the battles now all right, so going into the first battle, we Gudra into a mirror match, so I'm not really sure how to play this. Of course, got two steel types. I think eventually I will swap, but no, the opponent actually swaps before me. They swap into for Alligator, so I'm going to go for the Power Whip. Power Whip grabs a shield, and now I'm going to stay in here. I think at this point, I'm just going to let Gudra go down. Yep, Hydro Cannon will be taking me out. We're now going to come in with the Shadow Alone and Dog Trio. The good thing here is that I'm not taking super effective damage from these Shadow Claws. Going to shield up the Hydro Cannon. I will over farm here, throwing just before they make it to the next charge move. And this will either take them out, of course, from this range or grab the final shield. And we do got the final shield, so I swap into my Shadow Empoleon. I'm going to take the charge move here. Hydro Cannon, not going to do too much damage. And I'm able to Steel Wing, farm down the opponent. But they've got a Lantern in the back, and this is absolutely awful for the Empoleon. Luckily for me, though, I am fairly low so they're not going to get a huge farm down but I've got to be very careful the opponent is at a charge move on the Gudra so I've got to have lightning quick reactions here if I want to take out the Gudra when the opponent swaps and I'm able to click on the mud bomb in time and this will win CMP mud bomb takes out the Gudra I can make it to a second mud bomb up against the lantern and this is certainly going to take out the lantern and I'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we're going to see Gudra into Empoleon. So <laughs> seeing a lot of uh, uh, similar teams so far, but we are going to stay in this lead matchup, at least initially, then swap, catch the charge move onto my Empoleon. A uh, bit unnecessary here, but it is a drill peg, so that is resisted. So that is quite nice. But the opponent's going to fire off another charge move here. Uh, this, of course, we're going to be the Hydro Cannon dealing more damage. The opponent then tries to swap and catch their own charge move, but I can fire off a drill peg. Drill peg does big damage to the Dragonair. I can now come in I think with my Gudra go for the Dragon Breath farm down and I've still got quite a lot of energy here I haven't thrown a charge move yet so let's see what the opponent wants to do they're going to come back in with the Empoleon so I'm going to fire off my Power Whip here Power Whip will certainly KO from this range so I grab the first shield from the opponent I'm now going to swap into my Shadow Alone and Dug Trio I don't think they can swap out just yet so I'm able to get a full sand attack farm down and they've got a Shadow Dragonite in the back and look at that Dragon Breath damage you would not know that is resisted damage I have to bait here I go for the Marble and we just barely make it to an iron head in time and this is going to hit for huge damage taking out the shadow dragonite and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see an awful lead. I think this was my first battle with this team. I actually thought about, I didn't want to run double steel initially, but then I just thought like, oh, this team would be so weak if I ran like double sand attack users because I was thinking about using Hippowdon. And speaking of Hippowdon, we see a Shadow Hippowdon fully sand attack farm down my Shadow alone in Dog Trio. So there you can see Dog Trio is really, really glassy. Can't really be used as a say swap, which is why I did use Empoleon as a say swap most of the time. And here, this opponent is going to be able to fire off so many charge views i'm gonna call the bait once again and they make it to a third weather ball at this point i think ah oh, no i probably should have just let that go through because now i can't really do much with my gudra we're at like one hp remaining gonna go for an aqua tail i think the shadow claw will take me out here so doesn't really help. I can't use it as a sack swap. And the opponent's got a Superior in the back. So this is actually not that bad for the Empoleon, especially with a slight energy advantage. But unfortunately, they will be able to outpace me with their alone and sand stash up against the Empoleon. So not a lot I can do. Gonna go for the drill peg. The opponent rightly lets that go through. Save their shield for the sand stash. And they can very easily make it to a drill run. Drill run will hit for super effective. Takes out the shadow Empoleon. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. 
But GG's to the opponent there. Into next game, we see a Licky Tongue in the lead. So I'm going to stay in initially. I might try and swap and catch a move here at some point. I'm going to overfarm here. I'm going to overfarm a lot. I tried to swap catch the move, but the opponent continues to overfarm. Now we can live a power whip, and from a Licky Tongue, it's not going to hit as hard as like something like a Guja, for example. But we're now going to go for the Hydro Cannon, throwing on the CMP tie, taking out the Licky Tongue, and let's see what the opponent wants to do. They're going to come in with their Fur Alligator. I will be able to make it to a Drill Peck here, but they will go for a full Shadow Claw farm down, which certainly isn't ideal. We grab a shield though with the drill peck, and the opponent has quite a lot of energy, so this is quite scary for us. I'm going to come in with my Gudra, fire off the power whip immediately here, hopefully grab the final shield or just take them out. Well, of course, those are the options, but I probably would have preferred if I just took them out there. But the opponent's going to go for an ice beam, so I was expecting crunch. Not ideal. The opponent swaps. I thought it was going to be a meta chan, but of course, Shadow Gallade got a buff this season, but that's a lot better for my Shadow Alone and Doug Trio, especially with a shield advantage. So we can now go for the Mud Bomb. Mud Bomb will, of course, be taking out the Shadow Gallade. We may it to a second mud bomb and this is going to hit insanely hard up against the fur alligator nearly taking them out a couple more sand attacks is able to do the job and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there, and now into the next battle, we're going to see a Medicham in the lead. So, not the best lead, and also I've got two Steel types in the back, which I think is why this team didn't really work out for me. A lot of fighting types, Gudra just wasn't oppressive enough to take them on, whereas Shadow Dragonair can often beat a lot of fighting types just because the Dragon Breath damage and the Body Sam does add up over time. But here, we're going to swap, we're going to catch a double resisted Ice Punch onto my Shadow Empoleon, but I don't think they're quite into farm down range, and they make it to another charge move. Now, this will, of course, just be another ice punch so doesn't do too much damage there but they put me into perfect farm down range to come in with their for alligator we're gonna go for a drill peck grab a shield from the shadow for alligator but it's not looking too good our gudra is also very low so i just opted to go for an aquatel here aquatel is gonna hit for resisted damage and they do correctly no shield i needed to grab that shield there i'm also gonna shield here just because i'm hoping i can get off another charge move and i'm not quite able to get there in time so certainly not ideal hydro cannon gonna be taking me out we're gonna come in with the dog trio hoping for the farm down and we actually get the farm down but they've got another shadow head powered on in the back and unfortunately i'm not gonna be able to make it to back-to-back -back mud bombs here go for the first one but the opponent just barely outpaces me to the second one this should just be a weather ball it is double resisted but it still takes us out from that range and unfortunately we do lose yet another game but GG's to the opponent. Into next game, we see Salazzle in the lead. So a great lead for us here. I'm going to stay in this matchup initially. They're just going to go for a Poison Fang. So, of course, we can let this go through. But these Incinerates are now going to hit fairly hard. They're actually going to swap into a Shadow for Alligator once again. So for Alligator looking very common in the early season so far. We're now going to swap into Doug Trio, which seems strange. But, of course, we just grabbed a Shield Advantage. I can now Shield up the Hydro Cannon. I'm going to overfarm as much as I can, which isn't a lot because, of course, uh, I did swap out quite late. But we can go for the Mud Bomb, taking out. I'm thinking I probably can make it to a charge move, but no, one incinerate takes me out. Although those sand attacks also did huge damage up against the Lazul. I can now come in with my Empoleon, get the farm down before they make it to a charge move, and they've got a Shadow Venusaur in the back. So with an energy advantage, this is a very good matchup for us. We go for the draw pet, grab the final shield from the opponent, and I will be able to outpace them to back to back charge moves here. The opponent was also trying to farm two back to back moves, but a draw pet will certainly be enough damage to take out the Venusaur, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next battle, we see Gudra into Lucario, and this is a big core breaker for the team. Honestly, I don't really know what to do here. I have to stay in, of course, and the opponent is running power-up punch as well, which is uh, worse for me because, of course, they're going to ramp up their attack. And once they take out the Gudra, which they inevitably will do, uh, if they shoot up the Aquatel, which they do, I'm not going to be in a great position. Also, I don't even make it to a second Aquatel. That is awful for me. We're now going to have to shield the Doug Trio. I will be able to sand attack, farm them down, but two counters gets us into the yellow health range already. They come in with a Charm Togekiss. I probably should have just thrown the charge move there, but I bank the energy. I swap into my Empoleon, and they've got a Swamper in the back now. Shadow Empoleon is very glassy, very attack weighted. Hydro Cannon is dealing huge damage here, so does this KO the Swamper from this range? It actually does take out the Swampert, and now I can just fully Steel Wing, farm down Toga uh, Kiss, sorry, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Gudra into Annihilate, so another fighting type in the lead. Very awkward for us. I'm going to over farm here. I don't want to throw straight away because if they don't go for the Ice Punch, then of course I'm going to give them a full extra counter in for free. They're actually running Night Sash, so I will be able to live the second charge move coming through. We go for the Aquatel, grab a shield back from the opponent. 
And I'm going to let this move go through. They go for the Nine Slash. Once again, they get the attack boost. And so I thought I could just go for that Architel. But the opponent makes a very nice catch. Catching onto their Shadow for Alligator. We're going to come in with the Shadow Alone and Dug Trio. And unfortunately, with the swap, they also got a Shadow Claw in for free. So they, they are now ahead on energy, which certainly isn't ideal. I'm going to go for a Mud Bomb here. Mud Bomb will be taking out the for Alligator. They come back in with their Annihilate. and make it to another Mud Bomb in time. Mud Bomb takes out Annihilate. But they've got a Talent Flame in the back now. Now, if I was still running Waterfall on my Apollyon, honestly, I think I might be able to take this here just because Waterfall would hit so hard. But unfortunately, these Steel Wings are resisted. They can go for a Flame Charge. It will not be enough damage to KO quite from this range. But one more Incinerate, now they're boosted, will take me out. And unfortunately, they can just Incinerate, farm down my Gudra, and we do lose that game. But GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, another mirror lead leading into Gudra. Once again, not really sure what to do. I think I might try and swap and catch a move. No, the opponent is once again going to uh, swap out before me. We can go for a power whip. And now I'm going to swap into my Doug Trio, of course. They are running Steel Wing, so we resist the fast move. I can now shield this up, go for a full sand attack farm down, and I will come out with a charge move loaded. So I'm going to wait to see what they come in with. Of course, if it's not the Gudra, I might not fire the charge move straight away, but it is the Dragon Typing, so we're going to go for that Mud Bomb straight away. Mud Bomb will be grabbing a shield from the opponent. At this point, I'm happy to let the Doug Trio go down. Aquatel will certainly KO from that range, and they've got a Shadow Glygar in the back, so this is looking pretty good. Because they swap out, they are one turn behind and it takes either five to, uh, five fast moves to make it to an aerial ace or seven to the dig we take six to make it to the hydro cannon so we will of course make it to the charge moves first the opponent plays to their only win condition was if i called a bait there and they full sent the dig but we can go for the hydro cannon and now i can just fully steel wing farm down the gudra and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Jellison in the lead. So this is a fairly decent matchup for us, especially since they are running Bubble as the fast move. Of course, Power Whip going to hit for super effective damage. Shadow Ball also going to hit pretty hard here, but I will let it go through. It actually gets me lower than I thought. Of course, my, Gudras, my Gudra doesn't have great IVs. It is shiny, so I wanted to flex, but we go for the Power Whip. They let that go through, and they come in with a Zoom Reel. Now, I just swapped straight away into my Empoleon. I mean, it's kind of risky, but I didn't want to get fully farmed down with Bubble up against my Gudra. And luckily for me, the opponent is not swapping out either. So we can go for a drill peg here. The opponent lets that go through. I was thinking maybe I should have shielded because they're not swapping out here. They're clearly weak to Empoleon in the back. But they know shield once again, and they're going to save both their shields for their talent flame in the back. And this is now looking really scary for me. Of course, I've still got my Gudra, but it is incredibly low. All I've got to do here is hope that Dog Trio can make it to a charge move before they incinerate, farm me down, and I am able to get there. I go for the Iron Head. Of course, this is going to hit harder than a Mud Bomb, and we grab the final shield from the opponent. At this point, the opponent should not be throwing a charge move here. It doesn't really matter because I would have made it to an Aqua Tail anyways, but there's no reason to throw here. I can just double shield i wasn't at 2 hp so i wasn't gonna get ko'd there and now we can just go for an aquatel and aquatel will certainly be enough to ko the talent flame from that range and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see a Shadow Whiskash in the lead now. This is the awkward thing about Gudra, I think, is that, like, of course, we've got Power Whip. We can fully one-shot a Whiskash, but they're probably just going to shield, so I probably should have baited here, but I full send the Power Whip. I just felt like, you know what, let's just full send it, and unfortunately, they do shield, and now they can very easily outpace me. Two, char two, uh, two charge moves here, so we're going to shield up the Mud Bomb, and the opponent's going to swap out there into a Licky Tongue. We fire off the Aquatel, and then I will swap into my Shadow Empoleon. We've already seen that Shadow Empoleon can win this matchup pretty well. I'm going to let this move go through, of course. Power Whip not going to do as much damage as a Mud Bomb. I'm going to farm to the back-to-back -back charge moves here and throw them just before they make it to the next charge move. And now Hydro Cannon will, of course, be enough damage to take out Licky Tongue. I'm now going to fire off the Drill Peck. I did see that it was the Medicham coming in, but unfortunately, Medicham is just too healthy, even after landing a Drill Peck, that Dog Drill will not be able to farm it down, and Gudra also won't be able to farm it down. And of course, the Whisk Cash also left with a charge move loaded, so I needed to get off the charge move, take them out before they threw a move, and unfortunately, it's just game over now. I'm not going to bother shielding. They've got a charge move on the Whisk Cash, so Gudra goes down. They're able to counter, farm down the Doug Trio, and unfortunately, we do lose that game. 
But GG to that opponent. Into the next battle, we see a Shadow Nido Queen in the lead. Honestly, probably should have swapped out earlier than that, but I tried to make a catch. The opponent swaps at the same time, pretty much, into their Feraligator. So, not ideal as Feraligator does win this matchup, but we are able to land a Drill Peck. I'm going to let this move go through. They go for the Crunch, and that will put me into Farm Down range, but I will actually make it to a Drill Peck and win the CMP tie. I think this must be IV dependent because I also lost a few CMP ties up against Feraligator, but I'm able to take out Feraligator, regain switch advantage, and they've got Amphros in the back. Now, of course, Dog Trio can absolutely destroy this team, but I'm going to come in with my Gudra anyways. Basically, just tank whatever they throw here. Just gonna let this go through. Of course, Poison Fang is gonna be triple resisted by my Shadow Alone Dog Trio. I'm hoping I can go for a full Sand Attack farm down. Unfortunately, not quite able to do so before they get to a potential Earth Power. We're gonna fire off the Mud Bomb, grab a shield from the opponent. At this point, the safe play is, of course, just to shield. The opponent is gonna bait there. Pretty obvious, but might as well. They're not gonna be able to use, uh, they're not gonna be able to take me out with the Ampharos. So the opponent just concedes the match there. So GG's two up over there. Into next game, we see Trevenant in the lead. So not an ideal lead matchup for me because I've got only resisted charge boost to throw. But we will shield this. Dragon buffs are adding up. And the opponent's going to bait with a seed bomb. Not ideal for me. They're now going to swap into Licky Tongue. I'm going to bank a ton of energy. Then swap into my Shadow Empoleon. Although I might be just slightly too behind in energy here. We're going to see the power up comes through. Going to let it go through once again. And once again, going to throw on the CMP tie. Hydro Cannon will be enough damage from this range to KO. And the opponent's going to use their shield. So I'm actually happy to let Empoleon go down at this point. Body Slam will be taking me out. We're now going to come in with the Shadow Alolan Dog Trio. We're taking quite a lot of damage from the Licks. I did throw as they reach a Body Slam, of course. Body Slam is resisted, but I mean, we're so classy. I did not want to tank that. We're now going to swap. We're going to go for the combo play. Go for a Power Whip. Power Whip is resisted, but it does more damage than the Aquatel. And they've got a Reggie Steel in the back. So I'm going to overfarm here, throwing just before they make it to the charge move. Aquatel, of course, going to hit for neutral damage. Doesn't do that much damage. And the opponent does throw just before we make it to Aquatel number two. So very very good timing. They go for a focus fast, and now I've got to over farm in this matchup. But I do want to throw before they make it to the next charge. We've Trevenant is very low, so I think I might be able to resist it. Sand attack, farm them down, but the opponent's going to shield here. At this point, I was thinking I need to farm two back to back charge moves to KO this Reggie Steel, but I'm actually able to fully sand attack, farm them down, come out with an iron head loaded, and this is certainly going to be enough damage to take out the Trevenant, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Gudra into another Shadow Whiskash. So let's see if I play this the same. Nope, the opponent's actually just going to swap into Annihilate, and I can't swap out here. So I'm going to go for an Aquatel. Aquatel is going to grab a shield from the opponent. I'm now going to shield here, respecting the Ice Punch, and it is an Ice Punch this time around. So once again, going to fire off the Aquatel, and I ideally want them to shield this up here. But the opponent's going to let it go through. And now I possibly could have Dragon Breath farmed them down, but I panic. I swap out there. And then, I, of course, I catch a double resisted Ice Punch. But that doesn't really help me here. As they can come in with the Whisk Cash. And they do have some energy. So they're going to fire off the charge move straight away. I'm actually happy to let it go through. But obviously, with Whiskash in the lead, it's possible they've got a Skarmory in the back. And Shadow alone and Dug Trio, whilst we do resist everything, we also hit for only resisted damage. Whereas Empoleon does do a lot better in the matchup. So it's not looking too good for us. I'm just going to have to let Gudra go down. Come in with my Dug Trio. I will be able to make it to the Mud Bomb at the same pacing, at least with the first charge move. And this will certainly be enough damage to take out the Whiskash. But it is the Skarmory in the back. And these Steel Wings, they are resisted, but they will be able to fully farm me down before I make it to back to back Iron Heads. And of course, Mud Bomb not going to do quite enough damage here. So we're going to go for the Iron Head number one. We're going to see how much damage this does do. It does about enough damage where a second one would KO. But unfortunately, they can just fully farm me down there. And that's pretty embarrassing from the Shadow Alone Dog Trio. But GG to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see a Reggie still in the lead. I actually swap out into my Empoleon. I'm not really sure why I did that, but... Of course, I've got Dog Trio that I want to align to the Registeel, but it's going to be very difficult. I'm going to shield this up. The opponent actually shield the first move, which is kind of strange. And they do, they do get the attack debuff. And now they swap into Shara... Uh, wow, well, I can't even... Whoa, I can't talk, man. We're going to go for a Drill Peck. I mean, you're used to it now, so... <laughs> whatever we're gonna go for a second drill peck here and this will be enough damage to ko despite the debuff so i actually grab a shield advantage i'm now gonna let empoleon go down here crunch will not quite take us out there but that's fine we're gonna come in with the shadow gudra sorry the regular gudra go for the dragon breath farm down and now i'm gonna swap immediately into my dark trio and they will just barely outpace me to a charge charge move once again 
They go for the Zap Cannon, of course they do. It's, it's going to be double resisted, but honestly, against Dark Trio, that probably still does a lot of damage. We're going to go for a Marble. That does huge damage. If we go for the second one straight away, this will be enough damage to very easily take out the Giratina, and I will be able to make it to a third Marble Bomb up against the Registeel, so the opponent just concedes the match there. So going into the next battle, we see a Talon Flame in the lead, so this is definitely where we want to see it. Although, of course, if we've got an energy advantage on our Empoleon, that would also be very nice. We're going to go for the Arcotel throwing just before they make it to the first charge move, and I'm certainly going to shield this up. Of course, they could go for a uh, Fly, but they're actually going to bait me there. Of course they do. We're now going to go for the Arcotel, and Arcotel is going to be no shielded by the Metacham. And once again, unfortunately, it's not looking good for my Steel types in the back. Not a lot they can do so far. We're going to shield up the Ice Punch here. Going to go for an Arcotel. No, I'm actually going to swap, catch the Ice Punch onto my Empoleon once again. The opponent goes for that Ice Punch, which is resistant damage. We can now go for the Steel Wing Farm Down, but once again, we just barely miss out on making that Farm Down before they make it to another Charge Move. And this isn't too bad for us, but they've got a whisk cash in the back and unfortunately that mod shot will take us out we won't make it to back to back hydro cannons and unfortunately we just barely miss out there all shields are now down it's not looking too good i have to just fully sacrifice my dog trio but the opponent does correctly over farm in this matchup and now this mud bomb will be taking us out i have to fire off the power basically straight away but unfortunately that means i won't make it to an aqua tail up against the talon flame and they will be able to make it to another charge move here at the last second and unfortunately this will be taking out my Gudra and Flame Charge takes out the Gudra and unfortunately we do lose that game but GG's to that opponent there. And into possibly the final battle of this video, we see a Politoed in the lead. So uh, this is a bit of an awkward one here because I'm expecting them to have Ice Beam, but they could have Earthquake or Blizzard. Uh, so I don't know if I can try and make a catch. They do, of course, bait me with a Weather Ball. So I'm still none the wiser as to what their second charge move is. I thought about trying to make a catch here, but I'm just going to play it safe. Go for the Aquatel. I feel like... They're probably less likely to run Blizzard out of the three, so I can let this go through. Ice Beam probably still doesn't take me out, but it is the Blizzard. Oh, that is so bad. And now we come in with the Dark Trio, and the opponent's going to have a Mana Champ in the back, so it's looking like it's game over already. We're going to fire off the Iron Head, though. Iron Head is going to be no shielded by the opponent. We swap into our Empoleon, and I will be able to Steel Wing farm them down, but I have to shield the charge move. They go for Dynamic Punch, and they've got a Trevenant in the back, so I'm just going to concede the match. No way we could possibly win at that point, so so unfortunately we do lose that game so that's gonna be it for today's video if you did enjoy it please make sure you leave a like leave a comment letting me know and as well don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already and if you want to see more content like this in the future make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications that way you'll be notified whenever i upload a new video but with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day